The biggest PC gaming upgrade in years is coming really soon. Let's talk about it. Before that, this video is brought to you by RGB Swap, a better alternative to eBay that I really think you should take a look at. RGB Swap is a marketplace exclusively for selling and buying computer parts that offers much lower fees than competitors such as eBay as well as greater protection against scams. Whether you're a buyer or a seller, you're guaranteed to be protected since all orders have to be paid for first and the funds are held for 48 hours after the buyer receives the item or they leave feedback, ensuring that you never get sold a bad item. Additionally, all disputes are manually reviewed and PayPal is used exclusively for an extra layer of security. I gotta tell you guys, I like this website a lot and I really want it to take off as a better alternative to eBay, so please, if you're interested in buying or selling PC parts online, click the link in the description below and give it a shot. I think you'll really like it. So before the days of Ryzen, we had a long period of time where CPU performance increases had gotten pretty dismal, thanks in part not only to Intel having a great architecture with their core architecture, but on top of that, AMD had a terrible architecture with the AMD FX processors, and they just simply weren't able to push Intel to innovate any further. And so, yeah, we just didn't get a whole lot of performance increases for a very long time. Now, fast forward to the Ryzen days after the first generation of Ryzen, it pushed Intel to create more processors with more cores. And then we had the second generation of Ryzen processors in the Zen Plus architecture. Then we had the Zen 2 micro architecture, which is it was a huge improvement to the performance of their uh, last generation Zen Plus CPUs. And then finally, now we have have the Ryzen 5000 series processors on the Zen 3 microarchitecture and the performance increases do seem to be going up and up and up and up as the Ryzen 6000 series of processors is looking like it's also going to be a big performance increase and of course this has pushed Intel to increase their core counts as well and unfortunately they haven't been able to get huge IPC gains at least up until the last generation where yes they did get pretty decent IPC gains this time around but unfortunately they're still stuck on their 14 nanometer parts but in any case uh, I'm talking about all this because because, you know, with the increase in core counts as well as the increase in IPC and just overall CPU performance, well, you're going to need a whole lot more memory bandwidth. And since there are going to be new architectures from both Intel and AMD right on the horizon that look like they're going to be huge performance increases as well. And on top of that, we're going to be looking at RTX 4000 series GPUs as well as RX 7000 series GPUs that look like they may actually be the biggest performance increase in GPUs that we've seen for quite some time. As you know, I am expecting with the RTX 4000 series to see at least 50 percent more performance and you know all of this is going to require a whole lot more memory bandwidth and in order to do that well unfortunately ddr4 just simply isn't going to cut it anymore so with all these huge performance increases we're going to need a new memory technology and that's where ddr5 comes in and that's what i mostly want to talk about in this video today so if we take a look at ddr5 the reason why i'm so excited about it is because it has so many opportunities to vastly increase the performance of our pcs not only today but also in the future i mean taking a look at DDR5, we can see that in terms of the memory bandwidth, we could be looking at eventually over a two times increase in bandwidth versus DDR4 that we have available right now, which of course is absolutely huge. Then on top of that, it should have at least a little bit better power efficiency, so it may actually draw even less power than DDR4, which of course is good for not only desktop systems, but more importantly good for, say, laptop systems or any other mobile devices that could end up using this memory technology, so that's a huge benefit as well. But on top of that, and this is a huge one for PC gamers. This is possibly the biggest upgrade in terms of PC gaming that I've seen maybe ever because DDR5 is going to come, apparently, from what I've heard, with ECC as a standard. Now, if you don't know what ECC is, it's an error correcting code that runs on the memory that should catch any errors that typically would come across, say, your standard DDR4 memory that you have right now that maybe would, you know, say, blue screen your PC and it should hopefully catch that. And so it might actually save you from applications crashing, uh, blue screens, etc. All these various other things that can be really annoying if you are a PC gamer, uh, especially if you're overclocking your memory, this could definitely help. For me, ECC is possibly the biggest upgrade that comes from DDR5, even though DDR5 is also going to bring a whole lot of performance. You know, this is definitely a good one, especially not only for gamers, but on top of that, if you're someone who maybe uh, works with Premiere Pro, you edit videos or you're doing 3D rendering or you do uh, some sort of scientific workloads on your GPUs, this is definitely going to be a boon for you as, you know, you're not going to have to worry about, oh no, my application crashed, something went wrong, because error correcting code uh, memory should hopefully be able to catch that and stop those types of things from happening. So yeah, that is definitely a huge improvement that comes from DDR5. Now, unfortunately, it looks like the uh, cast latencies are going to be increasing just a 
little bit here, so that's uh, something that I was hoping that they wouldn't be increasing as much as they are, but at least according to an Anantech article, it looks like, yes, cast latencies are likely going to increase on DDR5. However, that doesn't mean that latency overall is going to increase. Uh, with the enormously increased bandwidth that you're going to get from DDR5, uh, the overall DRAM latencies are probably going to decrease, at least as DDR5 starts to roll out and people start to tune the memory and there's you know higher performance memory available. And so once you get this error correcting, you know, DDR5 memory with say like 5,000 plus megahertz or like 7,000 plus megahertz DDR5 memory speeds, well then you could be seeing a huge improvement in terms of your CPU performance. Uh, this could definitely benefit things such as um, CPU bottlenecked games if you're looking for a uh, high refresh rate experience and you're getting a little bit of a CPU bottleneck right now, that could definitely help. So it's going to allow uh, future CPUs to get a whole lot faster. Uh, on top of that, I think this is the biggest one. APUs could see a big improvement from DDR5. So uh, those Intel XE graphics could get a whole lot faster. Um, AMD APUs could get a whole lot faster and maybe replace the very entry level GPUs because right now APUs really seem to only be able to target 720p gaming. However, with DDR5 overclocked, it may actually be possible to target finally like 1080p entry level settings, which could definitely be enough for a lot of various gamers out there who are on a 1080p screen and are looking for a budget alternative as GPUs are extremely hard to find right now. So this is definitely good for you folks out there as well. And then on top of that, this is definitely going to be good for the data center as again, uh, with ECC, you know, just being in there as a standard as well as the higher bandwidth, there's going to be a lot of scientific workloads that are going to see a huge benefit from this. So, you know, overall, I do think that DDR5 is going to be one of the biggest performance increases in PC gaming history. I definitely think it's going to be very exciting. And honestly, if you're looking at building a PC right now, uh, my advice would be if you want a PC right now, of course, go ahead with it as there's always new technology on the horizon and you don't really know when your um, new technology is going to be obsolete. It could be obsolete next year every single time you buy it and you could just wait forever. Um, but if you are someone who you're okay waiting and you already have a computer, I probably would put off those CPU and motherboard upgrades as not only are there some Ryzen and Intel processors on the horizon that should be very, very fast, but specifically looking at the upcoming Ryzen generation of processors, I believe it's going to be on the AM5 socket. I don't know for sure at this point, but if it is, that means that you're likely going to get DDR5 as well. So that could be an absolutely huge upgrade. And I would definitely wait for that if you can. And then on top of that, even if it doesn't come out the next generation, it's probably only going to be a maximum of two generations away. So we really are on the cusp of a whole new memory technology that could definitely change PC gaming forever. And honestly, at this point, I probably would try and wait. But hey, that's just what I think. Do you think that DDR5 is going to have a huge impact on PC gaming? Or do you think that it's not really going to change a whole lot? Well, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and NVIDIA get more stock. Also, if you want to see more, click here you won't be disappointed.